Welcome back everyone, third and final matchup of the day and this is possibly the one that I'm the, the most excited about. Loud Esport, newly picked up by that org, they were obviously Loska before who played in our quals against Ice Force Esports and before I talk to my analyst, uh, Poobal here who is also Colorcaster with me and Noctish uh, up above sitting thing very nicely in in that corner um let's just talk i just want to say it, i'm so happy to see this organization back in talent league they were here in like 2022 2021 and uh they're back and uh hopefully better than ever um joe let's start off with you what are your thoughts on this game um i think it should be good it's i'm happy to see alpha play under an org ice force be, being that team alpha team for i think it must have been uh, over a year they were continually to just stomp yeah. through leagues like gsa but couldn't get an org until now i think we meant to see them yesterday obviously server issues weren't the kindest to us so didn't end up seeing them in a, when we yeah. me and cameron were supposed to cast them yesterday but good to see them today and i yeah. guess a personal thing with loud saying how much you're happy to see them back i think the first talent league sort of game i ever saw was was loud playing like a year ago so yeah. good to see them back as well yeah tesh do you have any other thoughts so this is a clash of veterans here, literally, uh, we can say, uh, in this specific case. Um, the thing is that <clears throat> Team Alpha had the potential to be picked away earlier. And now, with a home, uh, with, uh, hopefully a great home for them, uh, yeah. they can be more at the mind, uh, at the ease and they can pull what they actually have into the game uh, because that's one of the key differences between tiers uh, you gather some players you start playing you love competition and eventually you will go into a in, into a situation that no one picks you the the, the frustration builds up yeah. but team alpha is stick together and now with a home uh, that represent them uh, there is so much uh, uh, things that they can actually show to us uh, with with this uh, huge change. Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, the slight addition, Pango kind of moved to substitute. Um, Icox has come in, who again has been around Tier 4, around Talent League specifically, for a while. But let's have a look at the map Vito then, see where this game is going to take us. And... It's not Chalet, very close. We could have seen Consulate as well, but we go to Border Ice Force, choosing to take us uh, to take themselves to the attacking side. Loud then will be given the defense. Noctish, uh, what are your thoughts on this map selection? Um, knowing uh, these teams, um, what, what do you reckon will come through? And I'm pretty sure that's just a glitch on the UI as well. Uh, yeah. Loud did indeed ban Labs. Yeah. There's not three Ice Force bans in a row. So first, I'm, I'm completely disappointed that so far no team has decided to go on either Consulate or uh, Night Havens, uh, which in my opinion, there are um, completely different maps uh, from uh, the nature of this game. Consulate, of course, rework, uh, but uh, that wasn't a simple rework. I just reckon it as a new map. And on the other hand, Night Heavens bring a lot of momentum for the attackers especially. But that aside, we are going into the border. It's one of the most classic maps uh, yeah. in this game. has been around since um, oof, many years right now. Still, there are frustration about border between uh, special T1 players. But uh, here's the thing. These two yeah. teams both are experienced enough on border. Um, no matter it's, whether it's a rank or actual league. So, uh, going into this game, I don't want to see the most basic setups. I want some innovations. I want some uh, actual um, brave moves and brave setups, different setup that show us that, okay, although this map is old, we know how to play it differently with yep. different mindsets. Okay, so uh, we're just about to head into game very quickly, Noctish. I want just one team name and that is it. Who wins? Loud Ice Force. Go. Ice. 
Ice Force. Okay, thank you very much. We'll see you at the end of the game. As for us, Joe, let's head over to the Middle East to a very exciting map here that we could see between these teams, possibly very explosives. Take us through these bands because Montaigne and Lion, what's going on there? Uh, I think that really sort of leads into how Border can be quite an uncomfortable map to really defend. There's a lot of angles you can hold from outside. There's a lot of long range angles the attack can hold as well. And the Montagna and the Lion, they can just compound that issue, make it even more difficult to just move around your own map as the defense. So take them off the board. It can make roaming and holding down these areas a lot more of a comfortable sort of action. As for those defensive bands, Mira and Solace, well, Mira sort of sees a lot of play across many of these sites. You can be incredibly aggressive on an external wall, or you can play much more passive with it, just holding down a site itself. And Solace, I don't really think needs explaining, just consistently one of those most banned operators. Defenders protect Incredibly just strong gadget, really good at a multitude of things, including fragging, given that she has the SMG-11 and the P90. So it's no surprise that she gets banned so often as she does. And indeed, it's, it's, it's again, not, not the biggest surprise, but... I mean, I, I think the attacking bands stand out to me more than more than the defense. You know, the defense is pretty standard. I, I, I do like that we're getting a bit of variety here, though. Um, however, in terms of the site, it's not necessarily the most outlandish. Armory and um, office. Uh, I, I haven't called Border in so long. This is going to be a shot mm -hmm. to the system. Uh, armory and office, then. Um, no castle. No, no castle. castle. That really yeah. strikes out to me. A lot of teams will use those castle barricades. You'll particularly see one being placed sort of on that corridor. There's a doorway that isn't exactly obvious to most people, but there is a doorway you can barricade there. A lot of people will just play castle to just really sort of split off that long angle, give you more freedom and make the, the attack uh, much more vulnerable. We're not seeing that. Instead, we're seeing a cap cam from, uh, from Loud here. So... Tudu's got a plan. Tudu is cooking on an operator. I don't know if what he cooks will be any good, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, uh, and indeed, see, we hopefully will, because those ED, e, EDDs, um, we didn't really see them in much action throughout the day. Um, I don't actually think we've seen Capcom once, so possible excitement there, possible opportunity for Ice Force to maybe get a little bit careless, wander into those, but we also have the Brava on the board as well, which could Ooh. often make this, make those cap cams work for the attacking team. There's Ikaro already taken out here by that uh, Habana of Koji into a 5-4 advantage for Ice Force. Yep, very good opening trip from Koji, the support player there, just striking down such a powerful operator like the Fenrir. Tuji, though, does find some impact on this round, takes down the hard breach, so two very important picks, another from Pi onto that, that Hibana, so both hard breach taken down. This is a definitely an engagement that favours the defence now. The attacker are going to have a lot more difficulty getting into certain rooms, specifically specifically with Killy getting taken down as well. Suddenly only two sets of nades and some smokes along with those two rifles is all the Ice Force really have to get into this site and try and get an execute going. So much map control exerted by the defense here of Loud. There's just nothing I can really see Ice Force being able to do here. Botch C4 does give Payne a bit of an opportunity here. He could go for an aggressive push. Would have catched P13 off guard, but narrowly avoids it. Payne, hey, no, yeah, just whiffing those shots. And something that I completely missed was P13 going onto this Loud roster. He has been taken down by Scarex, but again, another name we're very familiar with here in Talent League. And there's Scarpa, maybe a less familiar name, but still finding kills. Pena going down, it's all on Scarex. In a one versus three. 45 seconds is left on the clock. And yeah, there's still three guns ahead of him. Does have one nade left in pocket, but there's two explosives in the uh, in the clutches of Loud. Uh, oh, Phalax, I feel like should be dead there. Scarex just very slightly missing that nade. And Phalax is down to 15 HP. Scarpa is watching and waiting on this um, wall as well. Onto the soft breach. Scarex is just being hounded, surrounded, and pretty much has been bullied by this attack. Those shotguns have been buffed, but still not enough to find the kill. Scarex at least pads his stats with kill onto Scarpa. There is the C4 being prepped, but Scarex is not willing to push into that. Just going to waste some time, sit back, relax. But round one, there's a way of loud. Yeah, and it's uh, especially impressive considering that we saw Ice Force get that very crucial opening pick onto the Fenrir. 
one of those kind of semi-active gadget operators that does need to be alive to get the most usage out of that. But they bounce back wonderfully. They get those two on those yeah. hard reach, incredibly crucial picks there. And from there, they really force Ice Force to take disadvantageous paths. They would have to have funneled through doorways or upstairs to get anywhere. And they just pick them apart from there. Really good play from Loud there. A great first defense on border, which I'm honestly not too sure. But I've always had, ever since it got re sort of added, the perception that border is attacker sided. That might just be sort of, uh, I guess, confirmation bias. But I've. Yeah. I've seem to remember border being attacker sided so already winning that first defense pretty good start for loud obviously it is just one round but if they can keep straight them together armory. from here <laughs> they can and exactly it, it, it was that also that primary site so you maybe expect them to win it but still winning that first defense on what could be again not too sure we don't see a lot of border play but what yeah. could be an attacker sided map is a great sort of start a great sort of momentum boost to, to kick off this match here as they're going to be defending that bathroom tower site i believe which is yep yeah, often seen as that secondary site so there's still plenty of potential for loud to continue to win on these rounds they've got an, oppress an incredibly oppressive lineup with the fenrir in the back too so ice force they've got to be careful and they've got to be thorough with these rooms or the room clears even Absolutely. I'm just I'm just trying to see if I can find some statistics. Uh, Border wasn't actually played that much at, um, in the Rumble, so I'm just I'm just having a look at Combine, seeing if we can see anything there. Uh, it wasn't actually played at all in Combine. Okay, never mind. Um, so yeah, uh, it was it's been played like four times in the Rumble. Had about 55% defender win rate. So it's it's nothing, you know, too crazy. Um, obviously, we could look towards uh, Titan Series, but these teams didn't actually play in the Titan Series, so there is still possibility for that precedent to be set, but I believe, yeah, Border, again, could be confirmation bias, does tend to lean towards the attackers, but the top floor especially heavily weighs in for the defense favor, so... This really is the round where I, I want to see if Ice Force can really, like, get the ball rolling here and tie it up 1-1. Because if not, then maybe we start to see Loud is even start to run away with things. I know it's only two rounds, but it could be that sort of start of a trend. Yeah, very, very quiet round so far. I was mm -hmm. inching closer towards that halfway point. Intel being gathered by both teams, but... Only one gunfight seems to have gone away, and it didn't even result in a kill. Skerex, though, getting very close. Intel as well, Ooh. benefiting him, gets that pick on Tutu. But immediate trade on to Killy, and Ikaro is close. He can potentially go for a wallbang if there is a camera in that position. I'm not sure where those black eyes are. And Killy was actually in a frost mat on site, getting a bit too eager. Can't pick himself up as of yet, so loud. I'm just going to let him sit there. They don't want to give away too much intel. It's going to force Ice Force to make a bit of a play here. As you see, Pano trying to get a pick here getting in a long-range engagement on the defender there, but still, the defense, they seem to be sort of comparatively oh, no. slow to react here as Killy is finished off by that ace charge. Not sure if he was ever in a really recoverable spot, but Loud almost seemed quite happy to just let Ice Force do their thing. Yeah, absolutely. It was an unfortunate death, but not entirely unexpected. Phalax finds a kill though onto Pano. Suddenly, Loud have this advantage yet again. Icox so is flipping through onto the bomb site. P13's been downed on the window, and there's another kill onto Scarpa. Phalax now taking the jump on through, although it um, has been heard out. Icox gets the kill. I don't think Phalax knew he was there. Thought maybe he was by the window. The Fenrir gadget, those dread mines just going off as well. Skerax prepping an ace, possibly could have even got a kill from it if he just committed to throwing up to that ceiling. But the fuse is down, time is going. Nakaro has to get a move on here. Immediately caught out in the first bomb, uh, gunfight, but still finds the pick. Skerax going down, but some damage dealt to Fenrir on those rotations. Koji now being the one to step up to the plate, and he does indeed find those kills. Yeah, really great response from Ice Force there. They tie up to 1 1, as you said. It's already starting <laughs> off pretty you. neck and neck oh, between no. these teams. There's uh, a bit of trash talk already going the way. Velaxico apparently was uh, sold down the river by his teammates by a call out from the Sands. But anyway, Ice Force, they still take that round win. And the thing that really struck out to me there was Loud were very much accepting of, of Ice Force's kind of setup. They didn't really do that much to oppose it, they were never really putting themselves in in situations where they could challenge the attack they just essentially let them walk up to site hell we saw killy jump in through the window and get frostmatted and not a single loud defender really did anything about it they just let him 
continue to be there, continue to feed that information that B was fully clear, while the ace came in and breached that wall. So it was a, a, a bit of a puzzling round there, a bit of a, almost a concerning round. I'd like to see Loud completely change their game plan and be more yeah. active on Border, because Border is a very small, very cramped map. You can't really afford to play the full time-wasting game. You have to get active, you have to try cause some damage to that attacking side. Because if you don't, exactly what happened in that previous round will will happen again. Ice Wars, they'll manage to get on the site, they'll get the plant down, they'll get those picks. This is a very experienced side here who will definitely thrive in these kind of earlier executes. They will eat, they will gladly take them. So Loud needs to get much more active here. Absolutely. Finding the initiative, just to sum up. But... I'm liking the fact that Ice Force is constantly adapting. Now we have a Grava, now we have an Officer, now we've got a Nomad as well. Completely separate, uh, at least composition from what we saw that previous time. We see it could be a very similar approach and take. We just have to wait and see. But they are still shifting things around with their operator selections, at least making it more difficult for Loud really to prep against them. Top floor still going to be under pressure. Icox as well droning in again on this ace. Hopefully no team kills this time. But yeah, I I, I mean, it, it's going to be difficult for Loud just to to prep against this, just because it seems like Ice Force are going for something completely different. Yeah, but still it seemed like again Loud quite happy to sit and wait. Finally getting a, a pick, a down at least on Zakili, so they've done a little bit of damage. But still, Ice Force they're encroaching dangerously close to a site that is pretty bare bones. There are only one player I think actually there. That's the Kaya, the Falaxico, and even then he's taking a lot of damage, half health himself, only with a TCSG. If Ice Force just pull the trigger and get in a decent plant spot, they could really just run away with this round. Scarex gets. One, so already that, just, that site is completely undefended. They're going to have to rely on outside help. The Osa Shield put down, and really, this should be a guaranteed post plant now for Ice Force. It absolutely uh, should be, and there's another kill to come through. Plant gets stuck as well. Kano with the frag now taking a lot of damage. Air jabs upstairs going to be the giveaway to the game that Loud want to play, and there's all the picks flooding through at once, lighting up orange in the kill feed. This is a flawless round from Ice Force Esports. So we started out with a loud win, but they haven't got anything since. Armory is just that defensive site border still very much in the hands of the attack as we head back up to that top floor. And it was a great round from Ice Force there. I, I'm not sure if they were fully aware of how much of a sort of gift they had in front of them of only one player on site. But either way, once they get that pick, they instantly just sprung to life. They swarm that site. They get the Osa Shield down and from there, because, again, Loud hasn't really done anything to stop them early on. They are free to get that plan down, free to bring the round onto their terms, put the clocks in their favour as the, the diffuser gets planted. And Loud had no real response here. Luckily for them, as you said, they're back onto Armoury now, so they have a chance to get another round, even things up. They had a fairly strong-looking Armoury defence in the first round after dealing with both of Ice Force's hard breach, but... It was just sort of stray kills. You can't expect to have a kind of consistent success like that. We often point fingers at rounds that are won off of just a big blunder or a big play. I don't think Ice Force are going to offer up both of their hard breaches in the first sort of minute again. And that could be a real problem for Loud. Uh, uh, luckily, for the side of Loud, they are seeming to extend out into CC, which would mean they would essentially be forced to get in an engagement early on. They can't just sort of hide like they have in these previous two rounds. So that could really help them and get them to the success they need. But at the same time, Ice Force have kind of just looked almost unstoppable in these previous two rounds. And they continue that momentum. Balax is looking like he wants to go for a run out, finds a kill onto Scarex as well. Aggression from Loud paying off here. They immediately have that player advantage. Koji looking to try and push in as well. He's pulled out the player, but still gets felled by P13. Koji unfortunate with there with the gunfight and it now loud in a much better position yet again they don't they haven't given up their hard breach but pretty much everyone else the iq as well very valuable operator to go down early killy at least finds one with the nade still finding that impact yeah he's also got a bit of sort of presence himself in security he could potentially get another one if oh, no my god 2t was just too aware of that attempt gets the pick now it's coxie's turn you know, i turn 
He's in a, a bit of a difficult situation here. There's a lot of angles he has to watch as Tudu. He wants that kill. He's creeping on close and taking a bit more of an off angle. His, his, uh, his only sort of... Icox is only teammate down below. That's Paino on the Osa. Still two shields in pocket. Chasing Ghost seemingly. Never mind. Philaxico eventually taken down. But it's still man advantage in favor of Loudon. No real control in that top floor aside from security. P13 has just squirreled himself away on top of East. He can easily just sit there, wait for a flank when his teammates give the call. And Loud is still firmly in a winning position here. Icox, at least the hard breach is still alive. He could maybe start breaching this armory wall. But that will just give the defense more avenues to get, take the oh. shot. And 2 2 nearly found that kill as well. Icox is looking to maybe get through the window and. Well, Tutu was certainly aware of that. Now rotated away to give more pressure onto the bomb site and doesn't allow Ice Force to get sort of a free plant, free anything here. I hear a C4 beeping. I'm not entirely sure where it is. In the meantime, there's another kill to come through. But he's found a triple in the round two. Quick in succession, setting up that Talon 8 shield. It's now all on Tutu. Somehow, some way, Kano has brought this round from the brink. I thought that should have that would have been Louds. It should have been Louds, but Paino denies them the opportunity. And Ice Force, they find three rounds to one. And I think that was really Louds' opportunity to tie things up to stay in this match with Ice Force stealing that round away. A round that, as you said, was so dominant from the the sort of early round. It. It's just not looking good for Loud. That that has got to be a mental breaker. I, I yeah. think a four versus two. I think at one point was the the sort of mm -hmm. the most dominant scoreline. Five versus three as well. That they've managed to yeah, let slip really away really there, and it wasn't even down to sort of a, a one vx from Ice Force either. They kept two both of those players alive. They got them into the site thanks to Pano hitting some incredible shots there. Diffuser going down as well, just to add further sort of stress to Loud. And once that talent shield got placed down, the Thorn. Hasn't got any, any impact, hasn't got C4, nothing they can really do there except try their best and win a very disadvantageous gunfight, and they can't win it, simple as loud, still stuck trailing on that one round win, they can yeah. of course re-attempt this site, they could try and make lightning strike twice, but after that previous round I think there's going to be sort of definitely bad vibes in the loud camp, I think that could definitely go on to yeah. hinder their performance in the rest of this half, because they got so close, and they've now given Ice Force three in a row. And that, that round really should have been a loud round again. That clutch factor coming in. Ice Force sailing high, loud. Maybe a, a bit of a shipwreck, but Paino somehow uh, managed to skip past the spawn peak there. He should have been dead to rights, but Phalax, the SMG-11 isn't necessarily the best weapon to go for those gunfights. And again, Phalax was the one that maybe just couldn't quite get it across the line. Um, still, I, it's good to see that Louds aren't deterred, but just some slight decision-making with the operators, with the weapons that they're choosing to take these spawn peaks with, um, could possibly be in order. <laughs> just, a, just a buddy up of, of the Droners. Just not to love. And a very interesting setup from loud there as well reinforcing those three walls that actually gives ice force basically sort of complete security complete comfort on the top of those east stairs which to me suggests that loud have really had their confidence rocked by that previous round they don't want to get any they don't want to get aggressive they don't want to try and force the issue to the attack it almost feels like you know they tried aggression that one round and it just didn't work out at all and despite having those good results previously they've just been too scared to try it again they're giving ice force so much respect aside from that botched spawn peak painter though takes a bit of damage actually shot on his drone potential bit of miscommunication between the team there from ice forces he must have not known that breach was open or he could be seen there either way good pick from loud there giving the man advantage onto their court but still Less than a, well, half a minute or half a round even remaining, but a great pick as well. Another loud may oh, finally have this round one. Have a bomb. Into a five versus two, then Icox and Killy need to be the ones that find a massive impact, similar to what Paino had in the previous round. Walking in, finding 4k, and there's at least a start from Killy Icox as well. Suddenly, it's brought back to within one. You said it yourself, Joe. 
not again. Surely we don't see a two versus five. It, last time was two v four. This time could be even more impressive for Ice Force and even more damaging to the mental of Loud. We just have to wait and see. The C4 doesn't catch. Icox though just doesn't quite read the swing in time. Killy now on this cover, caught out by the FNAT Dreadmine. 35 seconds on the clock, trying to find a safe position to plant with Achille into cover, pushes wow. into the player, finds the pick, and now in a two versus two, they've evened it up. Icox is looking maybe to go for this plant now. Vertical pressure, Achille on the cover here. Looking for the pre-fires, what a shot from Skirpa to maybe bring this back for loud. Shots coming through the other side, Falax with the shotgun. A scary, scary situation, but it's just brought back in time. Far, far too close for comfort there for Loud. Sure, they get that round over the, the edge, but still, it looked to be going very poorly for a second there. The Nitros both didn't connect to the planter. It was just down to the coverage not simply not being enough. Philaxico got that wall bang, I believe, on Zakili, who just simply can't hold two angles at once. Yeah. And still, good start from Loud. They've had pretty good starts to these rounds in general. They're getting these opening picks and the early responses at least, but then it seems like in the late round they just kind of crumble. They just don't really Defenders want to to deal with the attack and even then we say early in the round when in fact these opening engagements tend to happen in that second half they're still giving them a lot of respect and it's just not really working out on the whole attack granted loud though did win out that round but once again we're on a site that isn't armory and they have a zero percent track record winning those sites so far they still have one more opportunity to prove this wrong and up that figure by at least a bit but Ice Force still looking good, despite in their lost rounds, they look like a very good team. They are very composed, very good at thinking on their feet. So it's still going to be a difficult one for Loud here. As we are seeing a Maestro, who is not prior to that, often that is just really falling out of the meta, despite never... It's a real, it's a big example almost of an operator that not really ever has changed themselves, but the meta just evolves around them in a way that doesn't benefit. The Maestro's had about yeah. one nerf, and... Aside from that, it's just other things change, and a, a slow sort of free health operator just isn't really what's needed anymore. So, interesting CP13 on that roll. Well, we'll just have to see whether that can come through. Do, do you reckon we get a 3 3 half here, Joe? Because honestly, it, oh, I was going to say it looks like it, but Pano is immediately shutting me up there. Finds the opening kill onto Phalax, who had some big moments in the previous round to help Loud not throw it, basically, is the way I would say that. Um, I was going to say get it across the line, but that would be selling Ice Force a little bit short. Um, and also probably bigging up Loud a bit too much as well. Skerex oh, yeah. has this nade as well. P13 somehow alive? No, um, but straight into the line of sight, Koji shut down. Perfect uh, sort of response there from what should have been a nade kill to begin with. P13 thought the gods were smiling on him, but not to be the case. Killy, fully blinded by that FNAT, still gets the kill onto 2 2. The awareness is just too good. Ice Force, again, very, very strong in this round. And they have been throughout this game. It's been a couple of good moments for Loud, but mostly just dominated by Ice Force Esports. Yeah, and going back to that kill into P13, I think that's really one of the big things that shows this Ice Force team have been together for so long. Many teams, particularly ones formed kind of recently, you'd send that nade out, it wouldn't get the kill, and you think, okay, right, what do we do next? You know, drone out, try and find the Maestro, but Koji, basically yeah. instantly, once that nade goes out and there's nothing in the kill feed, goes for the swing, because he knows that P13 has at least been dislodged there, is going to try and get out. Great play from him, securing that kill. It brought them to that five versus three, and then on top of that five versus two, with this top control now fully given to the attack, Ice Force. In my opinion, there's simply no way they can lose this round now. They have that top floor control. Icox does get taken down with Killy getting another. It's all onto Skeptico on this this one versus four. Nothing he can really do, and Koji just absolutely slams him four two for Ice Force. Yeah, there wasn't really much Scarpa could do in that situation, really, was there? It's just, just completely shut down and out of it. And I, I, I'm I, very, very confused about how we've seen Loud nearly take a 1-5 half there. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm still thinking about that 2v5 that could have been, and then there was a 2v4 the round before that. 
something at least has gone the way of loud, but I, they they should realistically be be three three themselves right now. So Ice Force getting lucky a little bit, and now they can switch over to the defense, where you know a lot of teams are somehow are sometimes just more comfortable. Um, just just for the basis of you don't really need to to get get the most aggressive and and everything Attackers like that. Um, teams may be more comfortable on the defense, and Ice Force already have the advantage heading into this half. Yeah, I mean, I think you could say it's partly on luck for Ice Force, but also, I, again, I think it just goes down to them being such a storied, experienced team that in yeah. a lot of sort of lower tier leagues, if you're down sort of 5-3, 4-2, you might just take that a bit as like a loss. You might not try it as hard because it's very, very unwinnable, but Ice Force never give up. They, they've they continually shown that they can keep getting these picks. They can keep bringing these rounds to a more winnable spot. And maybe Loud yeah. just simply aren't used to sort of... I guess competition that is that sort of adamant that getting that round winner that that sort of adamant is staying in in the match so they just got caught off guard by that the first time nearly the second time they at the very least can learn from it but on their attacks now i just don't know how they're going to stand up this veteran presence Pano already getting very aggressive with this these holes made by the arena got the dmr in hand as well to deal a lot of damage it's all up to if loud really want to peek him here because Pano he could get a free kill Oh my god, I thought that could have been it. I really thought that was it, but just manages to slip away. Skirper, lucky to be breathing inside of this round at least, but we hit again a bit of an impasse. There's just some control being gained downstairs. Skerak still here on the bottom floor, uses the key barrier to open up the window. Payno finally gets a kill on these aggressive holes. That's P13 going down the Osser, taken off the board, no. and Skerek sticks his head out of a window, rewarded for the aggression. Falak taken out, and Skerek has found a he second gets another? as well. Ikaro, and it's a triple it's somehow! Skerex should not be allowed any of those. He shouldn't have even got one realistically, but it's a flawless round from Ice Force. Skerex, just let someone stop this man. <laughs> I guess, I guess, Loud are just going to let him continue to swing from from CC. I imagine, yeah. obviously, they have two angles to worry about. You have Pano continually peeking and holding that angle through the the bulletproof camera out onto the balcony. So I can kind of sympathise with maybe one, potentially two. But a third being claimed by him, I think that that must be four on that balcony being taken out because Pano also got one. Yeah, is um, it's uh, an intriguing decision from the side of Loud there to continue to challenge that fight and not just sort of cut their losses and go elsewhere. Really, and it left poor Tutu in that one v five, and there's nothing he can yeah. really do in that position. Isolated because, downstairs. Yeah, just there's. <sighs> I'm not sure what the plan was there, but either way. Luckily for Loud, because they got that, that those two rounds in the first half, Ice Force, not yet at match point. They very much could have been at this, yeah. at this point, yeah. but they're not. Attackers. Loud still have a bit of safety here. They can still afford to lose another round yet. They can still potentially, if things go really well in these next five rounds, they could take all three points. But Ice Force have looked incredibly strong so far. Koji specifically looking wonderful, as has Pain O'Killy, Skerritt, all of them really. They, they've each shown that they can sort of perform in the clutch, they can perform in the entry, they can perform when they're in that advantage. They, they've really just shown that they're strong at all aspects in this matchup here, and Loud, unfortunately for them, just clearly have shown right now they are not on Ice Force's level, but still got the remaining rounds of this map. They can still try and at very least get that round differential a bit better by winning a couple of these rounds. If they win the next four, you have a point out of it as well. Yeah. But Ice Force really in the driver's seat here it is their game to lose yeah fish said he thought that ice force were going to win this one they looked very much poised to do so and yeah i i agreed back then i definitely agree now they are def they are very much on a roll obviously we saw that first defensive round be won out by uh loud and we saw that went aggressive swing from koji finds one kill caught on the fadeaway by phalax damage limited by loud this time around, they're not letting these defensive players sort of get away with too much. There was that collection. There's another trade immediately after a pick. Pano found the kill onto Phalax, taken down by Scarpa. Better play from loud here. We've seen those trades come through. They're leaving though, and Ice Force at least have that to cling on to. They've also got the Fenrir alive, as has the Mozzie and the Valkyrie, so there's Nitro's potential for the game plan to be disrupted. Oh. Killy though. 
just has too many angles to watch. Scarpa gets that pick, and that really puts Ice Force on the back foot here. Still have one Nitro to potentially get an indirect kill, and the Fenrir can still swap around those positions, but they all look to be on the top floor, and that's not going to help against a Tory level push, especially now that Icox is dead. Mm -hmm. One versus three for Scarex on an entirely different floor here. Nothing much you can really do as Loud look to secure that third round. Absolutely, and again, we saw trades coming in from Loud after a, after a pick from Ice Force, but it's not the similar story, vice versa. Ice Force very much not able to get those trades across, just too isolated in their positions. Those beepers will alert Scarex to the position of 2-2. Scarpa, in the meantime, is free to get that diffuser down on the bomb site. Scarex tucked in close. Is he going to be ready and expecting this position? Oh, he that, does that, manage that, to find the kill. Takes the drop C4 over the top, but it's not going to find any purchase. Scarpa now rotated through to Workshop. Isn't ready for the drop, but then spots the player. Scarex taken out by P13 instead. The Brava finding the kill in the end round. Indeed, loud. They did go up 2-3. And uh, some questions for Ice Force there, uh, about, uh, just about trades and positioning, really, because loud had that on lock. Yeah, there was just no real response from Ice Force that round. It happens sometimes. Some rounds, your opponents are just sort of better. There was, of course, the potential yeah. for trades, and Ice Force just weren't exactly in the, the positions, I guess, to fully capitalize on that as now... They're heading down to Bathroom Tellers once again, trying to repeat that this time. Interested to see how they choose to sort of adapt that setup if they go for something more defensive. Mirror obviously being banned, so it does kind of force those defenders to be more active. You can't just hide behind those standard windows. One yeah. in sort of Bathroom, one on that top floor, just keeping the attackers at bay. You have to actually take those gunfights yourself, which can make the site much more weak, but still, Ice Force have shown to be a strong team here, so winning this site is certainly not out of, a pos out of the possibility, and that's why they've chosen to reattempt it here. We're likely seeing, well, we are seeing the very similar lineup here with that Fenrir, with that Glow, just for the area denial. Legion as well, very good at just getting that intel, and of course the Valk, the sort of queen of intel, still being brought, not banned this time. One of the few matches, really, that we yeah. see her make it to the pick phase. And so far, having a mixed result had a, a pretty big impact on that first defensive win for Ice Force, not so much last round. So, really intrigued to see how they just sort of adapt their, their setup and their play in this round to not fall for that, that same loss. Well, we'll see what Loud can do here. Could this be the momentum? Could this Could be, be a, a start of a comeback? It, it looks like it might be very quick, actually. Akaro's got that Ying, but sitting on the Repel. Phalanx with a Buck as well, possibility just to open that window incredibly quickly. Scarex is on the other side of this, might be oh, able no. to catch something onto Tutu. As there goes the opening of the window. Tutu, though, looking the other way in towards that office window. It definitely looked like that might have been the play. A possible wallbang could have been the end of Killy, but there's no reason to go for that. The Instead, the Candelas come on through. Icox now caught out, but the rushing from P13 what? doesn't find kill. Icox what? doesn't switch weapons in time. Another Candela P13's taken out by Killy. The vertical is being pressured, but not good enough because there's a kill from Scarex, kill from Killy, Tutu, and Scarpa. Now left alone, Ice Force looking like they might take match point. Koji at least gets one C4 over the top. Actually, impact onto Tutu on the way on through. One versus four, effectively one v three until Koji can be picked up. But it is all on Scarpa now in this clutch situation. I I'm not really sure what the play was there from Loud. I get you go for the fast push, but Flaxico as this round is finally won by Ice Force. Flaxico was just in a clear view of the hatch. They hadn't cleared that top floor. I'm not sure if they were running under an assumption. It was clear as I don't believe there are any shots fired in that office room itself by that hatch. But either way, Flaxico. He even had an angle onto that defender above, just didn't do anything with it. He wasn't even really trying to stick the plant either, just holding his yeah. position. Questions there as Ice Force somehow <laughs> get over to the get over to the, that six round now. that six round margin. They've got at least one point out of this match, and they are very much looking like they could take all three here as they are once again just performing on a, another level, really. Even when Loud have such a crucial advantage as having sight pressure, diffuser on the site, angles towards defenders that aren't looking at you, they still just can't, they can't find a way to convert that into a round win. They just 
aren't aware of these Ice Wolves positionings, and it's really come to cost them in a very winnable round there as Koji stacking everything on this doorway. Four Goyo canisters there as much sort of denial towards those um the, the plant as possible. Fenrir Gadget and a Surya Gate there as well. It would just be heartbreaking, Cameron, if the attack don't even bother to go through that doorway because that's such a heavy utility sink there. On that all is on the basis that they'll go for one specific push. I mean, if they drone it, then it still, you know, dissuades them from going from that area. And we saw what Scarex can do from this window last time around. As we are seeing this uh, this top floor site again. Obviously successful last time from Ice Force on the defense here. Are Loud going to do something different? Because the last time they just got absolutely shut out on that balcony. It was a 3k from Scarex playing the Azami as he is again here. So... It, uh, maybe Ice Force have read into the fact that Loud don't want to retry the same thing that got a flawless round against them in that previous time played. Koji watching towards the scene needs to be wary of this window and door pressure from the side of Loud and he just dips away before he can be caught out. Pano as well has taken some heat, some damage in the meantime, but we sit in a little bit of a stalemate as things have just calmed down from that early round pressure into a five versus five. No one's dead just yet. Yeah, and honestly, looking more at the setup and the kind of context of this previous match as Tutu actually does get the opening here, yeah. I am much more of a fan of that kind of heavy utility sink because we saw how much Scarex and Pano just made Loud's time miserable on the security yeah. side, so they're li li likely not going to go for there for a second time, instead opt towards the kind of office pusher here instead. So it makes a lot of sense sinking that much utility on the doorway, but there's <laughs> nothing to really deal with this kind of push, as we're seeing a breach instead being made towards this archives wall. Instead, Nitro goes out, doesn't get a kill. Instead, a pick, another pick even oh. goes way of loud. Make that two. P13. Four versus two now as P13 really going wild. Does not want to lose here at all, as it's just up to Pano and Scarex. That dynamic duo of security forced now to move closer to the site. Yeah, they have to clutch it up yet again. Scarex has been spotted by the player now rotating in through Fountain. Will Loud be expecting this rotation? Tutu, I don't think, is aware of it. P13 caught out long angle from Pano, the DMR, hitting those shots. And now Scarex as well is in a bit of a better position to assist with another kill. Scarpa, we've seen a 2v4 from this team again. Can they do it a second time? Pano got a 4k last time, has to repeat his success. It was a different side. Koji's already chucked in the Koji. DG. The mental warfare, this... Just trying to toy with them. P13 is aware of it. Pano now just trying to open up an angle for himself. Rotation through to a much safer area. So red pings come on through. Pano is ready, waiting. Akaro does have this exact same weapon, the DMR, but much less success on it. Starting to get this plant down. Is Pano going to be aware of that? We'll hear that diffuser start to get planted, but it's a bait. And the default cam being watched by the attack after Akaro has managed to hack those cameras. Planting again 15 seconds on the clock. This time he's got to stick it. And he will indeed do just that. The default camera as well being watched by those loud players. You can see Tutu on it calling out those positions. Akaro takes some time. Pano with a clutch with the round win. Ice Force, the GG from Icox was fully justified. It's a seven round to three victory. What have we just witnessed there? A, a complete sort of domination wow. from Ice Force there, both in the game and I think mentally as well. Ice Force were truly just sort of forcing the issue towards <laughs> Loud there. Loud didn't really have much of a response in the game. <laughs> That was to be expected. This Ice Force formerly Team Alpha lineup is just so storied throughout yeah. sort of European sort of tier two, tier three, even tier four. They've just been so good throughout for such a long period of time. And they proved that here on border, getting a, a phenomenal 7 3 win there, winning some truly sort of unwinnable <laughs> rounds there. Two 4v2s there, incredible play from the side of, um, of Ice Force there. What a round that was, and we've got we've got to talk about Pano. Two four Ks being won by him getting uh, two two v fours even being won by him just by virtue of finding four kills in the round. Uh, what what do you say? Crazy. Really, what do you say about it's, it's that? Crazy. It's Absolutely just utter phenomenal. and complete domination by Ice Force there. That's that's really about it. You can't say much else. It was, Seven to three isn't even that close either. Like it's it's just 
just perfection. So let's bring back in Noctish. Hopefully we can get in his camera. Don't forget to unmute Noctish. Uh, just, to, just to remind you on that one. Um, before uh, we start to look a little bit silly. Um, Tish, what a game that was. Well... Uh, for, thank you for Ifa to keep my track of winning 2-1 on the predictions. Yeah. <laughs> I must say that. Uh, but on the other hand, that was an absolute banger. A very great play by uh, Ifa. It showed how uh, the momentum and synergy when it's built completely can help in winning a game. Um, as we see through the game, the... Uh, combination of intel communication and great positioning situational awareness uh, resulted in uh, a great win for ice force uh, almost it made the i was impressed with the loud gaming uh play but the mistakes they made in some uh, certain situations certain scenarios um may cost them the game because they had yeah. the potential to really challenge Ice Force. Uh, but in this case, well, we have our winners. And uh, it shows that the teams so far in uh, these uh, two or three play days play that we have seen, uh, whether it was uh, challenges or in Mount's division today, uh, it should, we are going to be enjoyed very much. I, I still can't get over just the number of 2v4s and clutch situations. You nearly saw them bring, bring Ice Force bring back a 2v5 as well uh, yep. in, in that game. It, things that shouldn't happen like at all in Siege and, and they're, they're just being just utter domination, really. And you've got to hand that win to Pano, really. Like... <laughs> I want to say something. That GG uh oh, before yeah. the game yeah, it was so completely mental so game it was completely yeah. mental game it was absolutely spot on it yeah that's it that's i down to the team oh. oh i think we might have lost them but it's it's a yeah. good point good point to end on if, if uh this might be the last time we ever see noctish ever as he appears to have uh disappeared into the void but yeah that final round, the sort of nail in the coffin, I think, for the side of Loud there was the GG, was yeah. the fact that, you know, Koji was already just trying to get in their heads, act like it's over, act like, you know, there's no way this Loud team win this 1v1 against us, and they didn't. Simple as. Yeah. That final DMR duel between the Dakaibi and the uh, the Aruni goes the way of Ice Force there, and so does the whole map. Three yeah. points for them, plus four round diff as well. Very good opening day for them. It's it's that new org buff. Simple as the only yeah. explanation. The new org. Let, let's just let's just talk about the opening day because that is obviously the end of our games. We saw an eight seven win at the start of it on Chalet. Barney's trusted dinosaurs just pipping Foyer Fry to the post. Then, Myth Twenty Star. Now this 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 didn't quite go the plan of 20 stars again it was another 7-3 like we just saw in this game myth came out on top of that one but then it was also another chalet so i guess we've got similarities between uh, the games here like a steady progression we had two chalets and two seven threes nicely nicely in a line for us yep um it was quite a one-sided day for most of it i think although we did have that yeah. ot it it seemed like it probably shouldn't have been as close as it maybe was. It seemed like yeah. Foyer Fry was actually way more dominant in a lot of those rounds. They just came to a few very crucial mistakes in those crucial rounds. But yeah, apart from that, it has been quite a sort of a lot of one-sided matches here with just a lot of opponents really almost bullying yeah. the other team around the map. We saw both Chalet and Border here. That there is um there are certainly some top dogs emerging in this group, and that makes me all the more excited to see them finally clash. Yeah, the Masters Division top of the table when it comes to Talent League. And we've definitely seen some of that, that quality shine on through today. Particularly, I have to say, from Myth and Ice Force, who, you know, we've seen sort of contending Tier 3, Tier 2, and they absolutely shown why. Um, I think that's where we're going to throw uh, throw it off at the end here. Thank you, Poobal, um, for casting with me. The duo is back in action here on Talent League. As we love is. to see it. Um, obviously, thanks to Noctish, who um, has uh, surreptitiously been um, kidnapped by ghosts. 
Um, but we appreciate his yeah. input all the same. Um, then behind the scenes, we've had Wi-Fi on the Observing and Little Joe. First R6 production for him, brought him over from, from my Valorant cast. And he's done a pretty spectacular job. So thank you everyone behind the scenes and to all of you watching at home. We're signing off and we'll see you tomorrow for the Contenders Division. Goodbye.